Hello everyone and welcome, welcome back to our adventures here in Planet Zoo and our Blue Ridge Parkway Wildlife Center where our fox kids have just grown up right before our very eyes. Look at that you guys, they have actually transitioned out of their little fox coloring. Oh my gosh, now they're barking and excited. And they are now beautiful arctic foxes who definitely need a tidier place to eat than that. What the heck? Okay, that's absolutely not going to do. Also, we do need to see if we have done enough research on them to get some enrichment toys for them. So let me check. Oh dear, the bullfrogs are having an issue. Quickly, we have protesters. Apparently we have too many bullfrogs. All right, let me take care of this really quickly. Um, we want to remove all of the younger bullfrogs and leave just Wolfie and McAllister who are taking good care of the frog population over there. Hopefully that will tidy that up. All right, McAllister, Wolfie, are you doing good enough now that you won't attract any more protesters, please? All right, I think they're doing okay. Oh, look at them! Oh, so we have not spent enough time with our bullfrogs either, you guys. I am so in love with all of these animals. Hopefully they'll be feeling better soon and the protesters will go away. And we are going to be carrying on with our challenge zoo here in the beautiful Blue Ridge Parkway. I'm actually kind of sad because I don't know if there's a way where I can actually import this zoo to be a franchise or sandbox zoo. But if that's the case, then we will just have to start from scratch and a whole bunch of really wonderful moose. And we'll build a new Blue Ridge Parkway zoo because I absolutely adore and love the Blue Ridge. Right now, Chips and I are actually coming back from a camping trip if all things went right and uh, hopefully the way I was hoping they would go but we're gonna be coming back from a camping trip to the Blue Ridge and we're gonna be going back to the park where we first met on our first date and fell in love uh, so I'm very excited about that and I'm gonna be thinking about the beautiful Blue Ridge Mountains and their temperate rainforest for quite a while so I definitely want to have a zoo like situated there, but if we're not able to like import this zoo, we'll just have to start over and like build up our own fantastic building. Oh, look at this. And we could always save some of these because I mean, look at all of the nice little log work that's already been done for us. I really wanted to keep that, but we'll see. We'll see. Oh, I didn't even notice that there's like these really cool log covers. What? See, we could build the zoo bigger and better than ever. Oh, they even have window boxes. Look at the little plants! Oh, that's adorable! Yeah, we could build the zoo bigger and better than ever if I had, like, paid attention to the fact that there's already some cute little, like, cover areas. Look at that! I love these little log buildings! Yeah, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. But we do want to put an eye towards actually finishing the challenge, if that is the case, so that we can go ahead and snag ourselves the victory trophy for having completed this. So with that in mind, we want to increase the guest education up to three stars, and we want to have at least 12 different habitat species in the zoo. So last time we learned that prairie dogs apparently will play nicely with like bison so i think we're gonna try to put in a bison or two into the prairie dog exhibit so let's actually see we need to find what like species of bison is it it's like north american right i'm trying to remember north american beaver different from the eurasian beaver who happens to be a little bit bigger as we learned the um eurasian like the european beaver is much larger than the north american beaver Let's see, so if I was going to be a buffalo, it would be American Bison! We found it! Alright, and we'll go ahead and with American Bison, the way that they are set up in their population groups is actually a group size of 3 to 15 with one male up to 14 females. And that's kind of what we saw when we were actually in Yellowstone is the most common herd size that we saw was kind of smaller and you could tell there was like one male and a bunch of females and their babies. But you did see the herds kind of mixed together into like much bigger mega herds here and there. And I can't help but wonder if we still had the traditional like number of bison up to like the westward expansion in the United States, which was like 55 million bison. <laughs> like, do we really know how bison herds would work together for group size because we're looking at uh, like less than one percent like fragment of a fragment of the remaining populations of bison so i always wonder if that's that kind of group size and the way they behave would actually 
be what we see today because if you had numbers that were in the millions and then you shrink it down to like yeah there's maybe like i don't know maybe a thousand hanging around here i just don't know if we see the same behavior that we would have at their peak so that makes me curious <gasps> there's a little market button for the bison now that makes my life so much easier so we're gonna go ahead and we will snag how about one boy two girls that sounds good and we'll try to go with the healthier boy which i think is going to be this guy right over here he has very bad immunity. Oh no, okay, broken barrier. Animals might escape. We'll go take care of that in just a second. But first, let's add in some bison to the prairie dog zone, because apparently that will make them happy. And what's going on over here? Whose habitat is broken? Is that the cougars? Wait a second. Wait a second! It is the cougars! Nat, no! Nat, come over here! Oh my goodness, okay, where is my mechanic? Did Nat just like destroy the glass? Have have my cougars figured out that they don't really need to listen to me anymore? That's not good. Oh yay, the staff facilities are fully researched. Good job, Kayaker Zelda. I'm not going to put you on any other research right now because I kind of need this to be fixed. All right, let's see. Can I replace this? Uh, there, phew, okay. Well, I can replace that, but I think that our cougars are getting a little bit wild. Uh, are they actually bored? Nat, are you doing okay? You should have like a couple. Yeah, this is the cougar. There should be two cougars in here. Yeah, Cleo's still here. Cleo, no! <laughs> Cleo just broke her, her area too, but I caught her in time. It's because the barrier is like down to 3%. My, my kayakers have been so busy kayaking and like looking up new things. They have failed to maintain the barrier, but hopefully like that'll be fixed soon. All right, yeah. Are you guys happy? Do you have enough toys? Yeah, their enrichment is just fine, so they should be fine. All right, ooh, vet research done, nice. Ooh, we're doing a little research on the Arctic foxes. That's wonderful. Let's see, Essence is not happy because Essence is like, whoa, it got cold all of a sudden. I am displeased with that. Hang in there, Essence. Okay, I think we need to go ahead and add in like a warming stone for her. Because the once the reptiles in particular get really cold, it's not like they're going to move that quickly. So let's put a little heater in here. Essence, stay here! You're supposed to move sluggishly! You're an alligator! <laughs> Does does her temperature actually change if she's in the water? That's something I wonder about. All right, she's doing okay now. She went down to the bank, and now that we have the warming stones, they seem to be okay. And Duward, what a cool name. I love that, Duward. What? What? You guys, do you see what I see? There's a little baby chomper down here. I didn't know we had little baby alligators going around. Oh, that's it. I want to have like a permanent franchise zoo. Still sad I can't, I'll keep digging around because I thought you were supposed to be able to save your zoos like as a, a like template that you could put down. But I guess it makes sense that it's fran safe franchise as sandbox zoos, not the other way around. That makes a lot of sense. All right, who's unhappy? Little ones, I know, it's cold. Oh, look at the bison! Yes, how are you guys doing? We'll get some food enrichment in for you in just a little bit here. Are you doing okay in here, Ella? No, it's really cold for you? Okay, hang on. We'll, we'll go ahead and we'll put in some heaters. It doesn't usually get too cold. Um, at least where we're at. All right, is this going to warm things up? Let's make it, how about... 75 should be good enough for a little cave. Caves usually maintain their temperature pretty well, too. And we'll just kind of sneak a few of these in here. Man, I am a little sad that we, like, don't get to keep our our zoo. But that's okay. I've had so much fun getting it going. All right, there you guys go. We don't want our prairie dogs to freeze. So they're, they're settling in and getting comfy. Excellent, excellent. All right, we're gonna, okay, now I'm stuck in the cave. That's fine, nobody panic. There, Whew. Oh, what a cute little prairie dog hole right over here. Gosh, if I looked up and saw a prairie dog digging above me, I would be absolutely thrilled. And I definitely wanna try to like rebuild this really amazing sort of cave exhibit. That's so cool. Oh my gosh. Oh, look at all the people, yay. Okay, start donating and getting that education up, guys. 
wiki wiki like get on that all right meanwhile let's go ahead and see how we're doing on the challenge so we now have eight out of 12 species so let's see what other animals we could add in here let's sort by any species and we have got the tapir, which we might need to work with in a little bit. And meanwhile, the sea lions have been very happy. We took care of the cougars. The Galapagos tortoises are apparently an option, which is interesting. Um, do we have... Oh, grizzly bear! Adding in a grizzly bear would be really cool! Then we've got beavers. Nala. Oh, pronghorn! We could probably sneak a pronghorn or two in with, like, our, our little prairie dogs. So we won't get too many pronghorn. I think we'll maybe just get, like... A few females. We'll get two females. Well, how big do they want their group size to be? Oh, I can't adopt her. Dang it. Listing expired. All right. Well, let's see. Zoopedia. How big do you want your groups to be? Female bachelor groups 1 to 11. So hopefully that'll be good enough. We'll have a little female bachelor group. Look at all the money we're making now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And we'll add the pronghorn over here as well. And we'll see how that works out. This actually might be more of a challenge than I thought to like get enough species in that we can manage this this event. So let's see. Now that we have pronghorn, I think building a habitat for grizzly bear is definitely <gasps> timber wolves. Oh my word. Okay, I think timber wolves and grizzly bears are on the list. Um and then we might we might even sneak in an okapi somewhere because you love okapi, and it 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 definitely would be kind of like an unexpected rescue okapi. Because, I there are no okapi in the Blue Ridge Mountains in North America. Just saying, guys. Just saying. However, the okapi and the tapir will get along well, so we could double up there, and I think the warthog would get along with them too. How many more species do we need now? Let's see. We have nine. 10, 11, 12. So we need three more species. So I think actually grizzly bear, timber wolf will be our two goals. Uh, and then maybe the okapi because they actually really prefer like quiet little spaces. Or we could add, some, add in some ringtail lemurs and just pretend that they're like raccoons. <laughs> All right, I'm excited you guys. Look at how good our amazing bison look just tucked up on top of this hill. I love it. And now we're going to look into adding, I mean, we could put in like a grizzly bear. Let's see, grizzly bear needs a lot of room. So where would I put a grizzly bear? Probably back here, to be honest. Like, I think having a grizzly bear back along this area and maybe breaking into the lake a little bit so that they can swim in the water. Yeah, I think this would actually be a great place to put a grizzly bear. It's already got a ton of trees. What we'll do is we will actually change this path. And then that actually takes people right up to the cougar area too, which I like. So, let's change over this path. And little do people know that we're about to have a grizzly bear. Oh, and I can't wait to build our permanent Blue Ridge Park. It'll be the sister park of this one. This was the one that we were just supposed to like learn on. All right, we'll move those little paths for now. I'll let this come right up against the cougar exhibit because why not? Watch for that rock. Why is there a rock there to like trip people? Okay, we'll move the rock over here. There we go. There are some good rocks in the mountains after all. I hope Chips and I have been having a great time. Hmm. And for a grizzly bear, I think I want to take things a little bit more seriously. Maybe not with brick. Maybe this one. I, I, I think we need to have like, well, no. Well, how, how tough do you need to make it for a grizzly bear? Can I have a wooden barricade? Ha! <laughs> wooden barricade. Do you guys get it? Barricade? We're putting in the grizzly bear. I like it. I like it. All right, let's see. We need to have at least 8,000 square feet, grade four climb proof, greater than two meters. So over six feet, that's grade three. So wooden logs, guess what? They're not grizzly bear proof, but this Gabon thing is. Ooh, our kayakers have done more research. Yay, the Australian theme! Woo! And Avery the Arctic Fox is going ahead and mating. <gasps> what happened with Olivia? 
Why is everybody... Oh dear, who's escaped? Embry! Of course! I mean, look at this. This is like perfect size for escapees. Pronghorn can jump. Like, they can really, really jump. That's kind of what they do. Uh, they can spring right over fences, usually pretty easily. Oh dear. Ah, oh, kitty! What's wrong? Oh my gosh. There's a lot of really concerned people about our frogs. Um, kitty, what's the matter? Nutrition? It's just your food and water? Oh dear, I think we need more help! <laughs> All right, guys, we need to hire ourselves another zookeeper because clearly I, I was like, oh, darn. I guess today might be the last day we're here because we'll finish the challenge easy peasy. But apparently not. All right. We actually need... No, no, come here. Come here, you. All right. Whew, there we go. So we actually need to have... This is going to be Perry. So this is going to be... Um, Stream Cleaner Perry. And Perry, thank you so much for being one of our amazing patrons to make all of our adventures possible. I am so glad that you're here, able to help take care of the immense chaos that is going on at Sill Hills. We now have a lot of animals to take care of, so it makes sense that we need more people. Uh, let's see, who else is unhappy? Kitty is unhappy. Olivia is getting transported. Kitty is hungry. Uh, I think that she'll have like her food and everything shortly because i'm pretty sure that's what our keeper is off where'd our keeper go perry perry where'd you go i turned my back for like one second one second yeah off preparing food yay all right and actually speaking of which oh, foxy the north american beaver is about to have more offspring oh this is why we need permanent zoos i love having permanent zoos because then you get to stay with the animals and and their like family and their legacy forever oh my gosh all right so meanwhile and we would stay in the zoo but because it's a challenge mode you're limited in animal trading however we're learning a lot in how to like manage everything whilst we're doing this so i'm happy all right do we have anything about your food friend the American bullfrog is a large species of amphibian that lives in the swamps, ponds, and lakes of the USA and Canada. Depending on its environment, it may be dark green, pale green, or pale brown dorsally with paler colored belly. Let's see. So the females are much larger than the males, and they're not endangered, but they are an invasive species in South America, Western Europe, Southeast Asia, Japan, and China. Interesting. So I wonder what they eat, though. Like, I'm still really curious about that. Hey, and Perry, thank you. Perry has just made it so Kitty has her food, whatever that food may be. All right. So meanwhile, how are we doing? You know what? We'll work on guest education because that's also something that needs to happen down here. Let's put down some, like, for finishing the day, let's put down some more of these habitat education boards. Oh, I guess we need more about all of the new animals we just added in. Yay! I love educating people about animals. It's literally, like, my life, my life's joy. All right, we'll add in something about the bison. And let's wiggle inside, inside this little cave. Perfect, perfect. You probably shouldn't see a pronghorn in the cave, but just in case you do, friends. All right, we're gonna put this down. Let's actually have a little bit more education about the prairie dogs. And then I'll grab this one and change this one to the pronghorn. There, we don't have a lot of education about them just yet, but hopefully we will soon. Also, Huta! No, Huta! Where are you? Oh, it's a little baby prairie dog. I think it's going to starve to death if we don't feed it soon. Where is the food here? Oh my gosh, this is a little prairie emergency. Like, what? Everybody's so hungry. Do we need more food? Like, more food spots? Is that what's going on here? Is that how we can, like, provide more for them? Is it because... Okay, oh, and Avery's having more fox babies. <laughs> That's why you don't need to be sad when the other ones end up aging out. Oh! Avery! Okay, so I think she's actually, yep, she's giving birth right now. <laughs> Alright, I'll name some of you guys after these foxes. And then apparently the easy peasy like challenge completion is keeping me very busy and reminding me, oh no Siri, you get kept on your toes quite a bit. Alright, we have a one baby girl right now, two, last time it was five, and <gasps> three! Oh my goodness! 
Just how many babies do Arctic foxes have at a time usually? <gasps> do we have a litter of four again? Oh my gosh, how many babies do Arctic foxes have? So the Arctic fox forms magnanimous pairs during breeding season. After four to five weeks, they'll go ahead and give birth five to eight kids, but as many as 15 have been known. What? 15? Can you imagine if they had to take care of that many babies? Oh dear, and now we have all of like their, their older siblings. Well, in a lot of fox families, the older siblings will often stay for another year to help take care of their younger ones. Uh, but I think in this particular one, we're going to leave Avery and Lynn be, and we're going to have Sock, Jose, Trout, and Maple head out to the wild to become wild foxes. There we go. Because otherwise, I think we're going to be, like, really struggling to keep up with all this food. All right. Phew! My goodness, you guys! <gasps> Cleo's having more cougar babies! <laughs> All right, so we're having a little bit of a baby boom all over the place. However, uh oh, that was a, oh no, Olivia! <laughs> Olivia, oh, you are a rescue pronghorn. Don't make a break for it. Don't you know there's American alligators in the waters? <laughs> all right, guys, this is what I get for my hubris of being like, oh, this will be easy. We'll be out of here in no time. Um, actually, instead, it's utter chaos, but we're going to take good care of this. We're going to get Olivia back. Olivia, like, do your best not to drown. Just float in that box. I, and I really need to remember, if, when one acts in pronghorns, one needs to increase the size of their barricades. Just saying. <laughs> but all right, so if you guys could, do please leave a like for the absolute chaos that is our zoo and my mistake at thinking we'd be able to pop through this pretty quickly. <gasps> Two new cougar kids! And if you would like to join us on this and literally thousands more adventures, do please consider subscribing. But most importantly, my friends, stay curious. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye!